Okay, we've already learned then that isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different masses due to their different number of neutrons in the nucleus. And you've already become familiar with um, a notation for these different isotopes. So let's consider carbon. Atoms of carbon can have a mass number of 12, 13, or 14. So those are the three isotopes of carbon. You can see here the percent abundance or isotopic abundance is provided 98.9% .9 of all carbon atoms are carbon 12, 1.1% are carbon 13, and approximately one in every trillion, at trillion atoms of carbon has a mass of 14. So an incredibly few number of the atoms will have a mass of 14. So graphite in your pencil is made of carbon and so pure carbon. So if we were to have 100 atoms of graphite in your pencil, then 98.9% of them would be carbon-12, and 1.1% would be carbon-13. So maybe one of these, right, out of 100. And so if we were to then want to state the average atomic mass of an atom of carbon. Well, do you think that average would be close to 12 or close to 13 or somewhere in between? The idea that the mass of or the number of carbon atoms that have a mass of 14 is so little compared to carbon 12 and certainly and also 13 we're really going to ignore this isotope for our purposes. So if almost 99% of all these atoms have a mass of 12 and only 1% have a mass of 13, wouldn't we expect the average to be closer to 12? And in fact, the average atomic mass of an atom of carbon is 12.01 atomic mass units. So you'll be able to find this average atomic mass reported on the periodic table. So that's very important to understand then that the masses that you're reading from the periodic table are in fact the average atomic mass. It's a weighted average. And so just to help you with that concept of a weighted average, let's consider marks perhaps in a course. So let's say for example that you have 83% or a mark of 83, a mark of 88, a mark of 75, and a mark of 21. And if all of these are equally weighted, then we would find the average by adding them up and dividing by 4 because there are 4 numbers here. So really, we're weighting each of these at 25% each. That'll give us an average of 66.75. Now, let's take those same marks, 83, 88, 75, and 21, and this time, let's make the one that's 83 worth 40%, and the one that's at 88 is worth 20%. The mark at 75 is worth 30%, and the mark at 21 is worth 10%. And so, now, instead of each of these marks being equally weighted towards the average, that 83 is going to be worth the most, and thankfully that 21 is going to be worth the least. So pause the video and see if you can come up with a way to calculate then the average, the weighted average, of these values. Okay, so perhaps you have tried to figure that out. Let me help you if you're a little bit stuck. So just taking back the, looking back to the first example here, I could separate this calculation and say that one quarter of the mark here was, was 83. One quarter of the average came from the 83. And one quarter came from the 88. And one quarter came from the 75. And one quarter came from the 21. And each of these one quarters is really like 25% or 0.25 and so on. And that 0.25 really came from 25 divided by 100.
which right would have been the which would have been the 25% that we said each mark was worth when they were equally weighted. So we're essentially calculating 25% of 83 plus 25% of 88 plus 25% of 75 plus 25% of 21. So we can work this method that I just showed essentially in reverse order, knowing now that our percentages are 40%, 20%, 30%, and 10%. So for example, on this side now, I'll say that we have 40% of this average coming from the 83, and 20% coming from the 88, and 30% coming from the 75, plus the 10% coming from the 21. If we change that percent, right, per 100 percent, then we can convert like this. Oops, that should have been a 30. Times the 21, running a little bit of space there. And so 40 divided by 100.40 times the 83, plus 0 0.20 times the 88 plus 0 0.30 times the 75, plus 0 0.10 times the 21. So feel free to jump straight to this third line here from that data, but I'm just showing you how you could work that out if you were looking to, to see every step. Okay, so ultimately the weighted average then will come out to 75 and so here we have an average of, if we round that to the nearest percent, or nearest mark, 75, versus our average on this side was 67. So you can see that when the weightings are different, right, we end up with an average of 75. Now, does it make sense that that weighted average of 75 ended up higher than the 67? Well, certainly that low mark of 21 was being equally weighted in this first calculation and now it's being given the lowest weight possible and a pretty decently high mark the 83 right is going to pull up the average so our most heavily weighted marks here were 83 and 75 they're accounting for 70 percent of the average then that 88 is helping a little bit and that 21 isn't hurting so much because it's only in at 10 percent and so this is the concept of a weighted average and that's exactly how this average atomic mass here is calculated. If we take 98.9% of 12 and 1.1% of 13, then we'll end up with 12.01 as our average. And so the average atomic mass is a weighted average. So let's look at one more example, specifically in chemistry. Okay, so I'm asking you to calculate the average atomic mass of boron. Given that 20% of boron atoms have a mass of 10.01 atomic mass units and 80% of boron have a mass of 11.01 .01 atomic mass units. So even though we use the notation boron 10 and boron 11 for the two isotopes, you'll notice that I've provided the masses of the isotopes with more precision than that, so to two digits after the decimal. So when you determine your average atomic mass, you can round your answer to two digits after the decimal. Okay, so go ahead and um, see if you can calculate. It's really just a weighted average. So now find the weighted average knowing that 20% of the atoms have a mass of 10.01 and 80% have a mass of 11.01. .01. Okay, and so I come up with a weighted average of 10.81 atomic mass units. And so if you check the periodic table, that's what we should be seeing as the average atomic mass of boron. Okay, so this has been a short video uh, understanding how to calculate the average atomic mass of a the atoms of a particular element.